It doesn't matter how much you've spent on your team if you can't get the card to perform on race day. So in this guide, I'm going to cover all the aspects of the game that contribute to how long it takes your car to complete a circuit around the track. How about the car? Of course, the car. The biggest impact to lap times is the quality of your car's engine, followed by the gearbox. However, the impact falls off a cliff from there, with the front wing, suspension, brakes, and especially rear wing contributing a small amount each. Tracks where the lower parts are ranked as crucial will make the performance more noticeable, but for general performance nothing will be improving the engine or gearbox. Unsurprisingly, these two parts are the most expensive for your machine shop to craft, so you'll have to make some hard decisions during the season about just how much cash you want to sink into their development. Still, having the best engine on the grid will cover a multitude of sins in other areas, so accepting a sponsorship from Preparation H to fund your next engine development might be just what your ailing team needs. Soothe the burn. Aside from the car, the driver has the next biggest effect on your speed around the track. All nine of the driver's stats contribute to their ability to push the car to its limit, so you'll want to acquire the best drivers you can afford that have stats as close to 20 as possible in each category. Yes, even the feedback score translates to race day, beyond its ability in car setup. Among these nine, I believe that the overtaking skill and the focus skill are of slightly higher priority as they affect your driver's ability to pass other cars on the track and lower their chances of mistakes while driving. A runoff in a hairpin turn might cost you 5-8 to eight seconds in lap time, which could be the difference between a podium or finishing outside P10, and that's excluding the more devastating mistakes that result in crashes. The other stats affect their corresponding action too, so don't neglect them entirely. It's just that if you are trying to decide between a handful of potential drivers, I'd use overtaking and focus as the tiebreaker stat. While there is no way to shave the weight of your car parts in the machine shop, the game does take into account the weight of the fuel you carry as you zoom around the track, and each lap of fuel will have a time penalty associated with its presence in the tank. The amount of time lost for one lap of fuel will be dependent on the track, as the tracks are all different lengths. This value can be seen in pit lane when you go to decide the fuel load for the car, and the total penalty for all of the car's fuel will be applied in real time to the performance on the track. So as your car burns off its fuel payload, the associated penalty will drop. But it's also small enough that you probably won't notice unless your driver spends an entire lap racing in clean air. If that's the case, you are likely doing something really right, or really wrong. Not to mention that you are probably playing with the engine throttle of your cars at the same time, which will have a much more noticeable impact on your lap times than fuel load. From what I have been able to determine, the lower three engine settings are linear in performance differential, with around a half second of lap time difference but the true strength of the lower two settings is the reduction in fuel burn per lap. The overtake and super overtake engine settings are where the real performance gain lies, though a massively increased fuel consumption and wear on your engine and gearbox. I'd be really wary of running for long in super overtake mode, but I'd also say that it's definitely a goal to get your car condition to a point where you can run most of the race in overtake. The time gain difference is just that huge. As it turns out, your driving style for the car has a bigger impact on your lap times than any non-overtake engine setting. This effect is linear throughout, each step adding 3 quarters of a second to your lap time. I should note that this chart is for medium length races, though I don't expect much change with the short or long race settings. This is pretty straightforward, but remember that your tire performance will degrade with wear, and that your driving style will affect how quickly they need to be replaced. I have a separate video for more detailed information on tires which you can find at the top of the screen. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.